So it's happening more frequently, right? Glimmers of hope. I mean, and today uh, we got a little bit of a slow start, but then that glimmer started to become a glow. We have back to back sessions uh, that are up, which is, by the way, been rare. But here's one thing, folks, and it's been a little stealthy. This market has been building momentum. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ on June 16th and Coming into this month, we're really hotter than July. I know there's a national heat wave that's dominating the headlines, but uh, the market is on fire. This is July coming into today, and it has been absolutely phenomenal, and it's led by the names that you love, right? Apple up 16%, Google up 7.5%, Amazon up 14%, Tesla's up 15%. These are the names that you have wanted to lead the charge, and they are. Of course, we're going to stay guarded, right? Our nature right now is not to believe that this is going to continue. Uh, of course, one of the problems, we need more clarity on the Federal Reserve. And of course, how inflation and recession are going to play out. That's the timeline that nobody really knows. So until those unknowns are resolved, investors are probably going to have to make uh, short-term decisions based on a few things. One of them is going to be the dollar. This is not getting enough press. I've tried to cover it on this show. The dollar's made a pretty good pullback here recently. This pullback has coincided with the market going much higher. The other thing, the VIX, the so-called fear index, it might be more associated with volatility. Here's a good thing. It topped out here. Guess when the bottom topped out? The next day. So the VIX has come down. The stock market has gone up. Those are all great things. The dollar's pulling back. We need to see that. And then there's the key technical stuff, right? We talk about this all the time on the show the 50-day moving average. Now, as of yesterday, six of 11 S&P sectors actually closed above that threshold. As you can see, so did the S&P. So right now, we got to fill a gap here. I still think 4,200 is a, a number that we could approach, but we've got to do some backing and filling, as it were. The bottom line is that near term, we look pretty good. Earnings are going well. Conference calls have been hopeful. And I just think, you know what, maybe near term, we can make some money until we figure out what the Fed is figuring out. Joining us now to help us figure it out, Market Gates Group Managing Director Michelle Snyder, Options Play Director of Education Jessica Inskip. Uh, Michelle, let me just start with you. Just let's just talk again, macro point of view. What are the most important trends that you're seeing right now? The current trends. Well, I think the current trend, just so I can add to what you said and not repeat, because obviously we all know about inflation, the potential of recession, the Fed, and so on. But one of the good trends that have come out of this is that the consumer discretionary, which everybody left for dead, is actually stronger than people thought. And that's in the face of a lot of people not working still, lots of jobs available, wages going down in the face of inflation uh, in terms of the ratio between the inflation numbers and, and the wages. And people are still relatively optimistic. So right. I think that's going to be your biggest thing to watch for going forward. Can the consumer stay in the game? And if it does, I'm not saying we're going to go to like new highs or anything. Sure. But the stagflation scenario at least may take us exactly to what you said about that 4,200 level. Yeah, and, I, and I love that you're bringing that up. I actually have Kristen coming on after you all because I think that's been, to your point, something that everyone's ignoring. Jessica, I've looked over your work. You're, you do a little bit of everything. So let's just start with the <laughs> trends that you're seeing right now that are most compelling. Yeah, well, I think it really goes into that inflationary reasons and why we're in this high inflation market and how the Fed is really going for a soft landing. So showing the health of the consumer and looking at consumer discretionary, I love that you said that, Michelle. I think that's great. We need a healthy consumer for that soft landing. But the reasons for inflation are really hot labor market. There are, it's, it's record low unemployment. There's a lot of employment factors that are out there. So employers are raging, raising wages. And that, of course, trickles down to the product. And right. it's also supply constraints. So th that's what I'm looking for is data that's going to show me that what the Fed is doing is working, that the labor market is cooling off. And of course, the pullback that we've seen recently in energy is a positive sign as well, in addition to closing above that 50-day moving average. So I think it's all all rhymes, if you will. Yeah, I think so. Here's the thing. In the meantime, you know, for all the talk about retail investors having to capitulate, it looks like it's Wall Street that's capitulated. So much money is building up. We're talking active money managers. They're barely long. Hedge funds have been net short this market. And we found out that global money managers, these are money managers around the world. You see this, their cash levels are levels <coughs> generally it's, uh, <coughs> sorry, associated with market bottoms. Jessica, I see this as dry powder. I love the notion of getting involved in the market now, knowing that these fund managers got to put that money to work. 
Yeah, and that's even a feral rule. One of them is it the least will be at the bottom, least buyer. So it's really a contrarian thing, if you will. But yes, capitulation is extremely important. And this is where I focus on really where the rally is coming from and where the fall and declines are coming from, which is really tech oriented. So looking at the volatility index, there the VIX, the traditional one you look at, that's the S&P 500. If you look at VOLQ, that actually peaked even higher, which tracks the NASDAQ 100. Right. So looking for areas of capitulation and opportunities is something that, yes, their cash needs to be put to work. And that's a, a great sign of capitulation among others as well. You know, speaking of putting cash to work, Michelle, what are you doing right now? Well, we actually, you know, we were heavy in cash ourselves yeah. and we started to commit more. So our quant models at Market Gauge actually got long the indices above this 50 day moving average. So that is such an important line in the sand. In terms of how we've advised our clients on the discretionary level, well, we were in ARC. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. So mm -hmm. that's paid off pretty nicely. China, we sort of got out of, but we're starting to accumulate some of the China tech stocks because we anticipate that that COVID breakdown will not last for too long, even South Korea. But EVs are really now where we're focused the most, partly because of the Biden bill, but right. also because we've reached a mass adoption threshold of over 5% which if you look around the world statistically means generally that more and more EV sales will start to happen over time. So those are the main ones, but we still like biotech and we're looking at medical devices and the hospitality space. So if we go back to consumers, if the consumers stay strong, those are very undervalued right now. Names like Marriott and Cheesecake and right. Las Vegas stands and, and areas like that. Michelle, Jessica, thank you both very much. Great stuff. Uh, we appreciate it. And, and again, I want to pick up on that because for all the talk of inflation and recession, you know, Michelle just hit on it. Consumers are spending like crazy, right? Now, here's the thing. They are spending a little differently than they were a couple of months ago. I want to...